Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. It's time for, if you've had me for class, everyone's favorite day of the year, Hand Plane Appreciation Day. And now, if you have not had me for woodshop class up until now, what exactly is Hand Plane Appreciation Day? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Because what I usually do every roughly March 26th, I set out all the hand planes we have in our shop at school. We go through some basic use of them, uh, how to kind of take care of them, adjust them. And at the end of the day, basically, we have a better appre appreciation for the 24-inch power planer that we have sitting in the shop. Up until now, a lot of you might not have realized that I did, in fact, make that holiday up. And if you didn't realize that, well, the wheel might be spinning and the hamster might be dead. But, it is one of my personal favorite days of the year because Mr. Bressler and I usually go over some of the different planes we have in the shop that might not see a lot of daily use. Now, a lot of you that did have me since seventh grade, you know, were aware of our bench planes, you know, most basic most basic terms, planes that have a knob up front and a tote handle in the back. We also use a lot of block planes, you know, the smaller ones. No handle, sometimes has a knob, but I don't think any of the ones we have in the shop actually do. Uh, and you're also probably familiar with the wooden ones. Our advanced wood kids, we always make these 11th and 12th grade year. Heat treat the irons. You're in charge of making the pin, the wedge. So those are nothing new. And in fact, the other year, you know, I made a small metal infilled one just to show how you could actually make a metal one. Basically, works the same way as the wooden ones. We do have to use small mallet or hammer to adjust them. So same way as you know the wooden ones adjust. Now. Most simple terms, I would say 90% of the hand planes we have in the shop at school were made by Stanley. We have a couple that were from the original shop purchased back in the 50s that are made by Miller's Falls, which is another hand plane company. But by and large, most of what we have was made by uh, the Stanley Tool Company. Another kind of common one that you might see here and there are made by Sargent. I think we have one or two of those on our shelf as well. Now, most basic terms, Stanley assign numbers to their different planes and the numbers are really arbitrary they don't they don't really mean anything other than what what the model number of that plane is so I have a good many of the planes the bench planes that Stanley made uh, they started at number one which is actually right around the size of that a small block plane but it has a knob and tote uh, those are quite expensive. Usually people just collect those. Mr. Bresser, neither one of us have one of those. I do, however, have a number two. This is a, it's made by a company called Fulton. They made like hardware store planes. But that company I told you about, Sargent, uh, they actually made this one because inside here it is stamp 407 and that is Sargent's number two sized hand plane. I do have a number three. Unfortunately, it's still lo locked up in school right now, so I couldn't get to that for our uh, hand plane appreciation day. We have some number fours here. This is a little bit newer one. It does have a plastic knob on it. This is an older one that came from my grandfather's shop. So it's from like the oh, 30s or 40s. And then what I have here is one It's made by a company that we really didn't talk about called Ohio. If you look at it, it's basically the same thing. The knob might be a little different shape. It's from the early 1900s. And the only difference really is Ohio called there's a number 04. So it's same size. You can see right there. Same length, same width. Um, just had a little bit different name. And up until now, you know, these are all what we call smoothing planes. We talk about this at school. You know, I always give you the advice, if possible, you know, we want to try to use the planes where possible. Sanding, uh, a lot of times, isn't the best choice. It might kind of ruin that nice crisp edge you have. The other thing is uh, a cut surface, like with a hand plane, 
is always going to be a lot smoother than that surface that you've sanded down. They did make a four and a half. I don't have one of those with me. It would be another smoothing plane. Uh, jumping up to the number five, again, I have one of my grandfather's planes here. So you can see, in comparison, the number five, quite a bit longer than that number four. Number five is what would be called a four plane, something that you, you would use first when preparing just a rough piece of lumber. Uh, it doesn't have to leave the smoothest surface. What you're using that usually for is just mass stock removal to try to get to a rough thickness initially. Another one I have is another Ohio. And again, it's a number 05 or an 05. And then one of my favorites, and it is usually more of a collector's plane, but I found one relatively cheap a while back. It's called a Stanley Bedrock 604. Uh, works extremely well and I actually have this one set up to do the job of a smoothing plane right now because it works so well. Uh, that's one nice thing. You can you could actually set up one of these number fours to do the job of this four plane. What's nice about these though is it's longer. So any divots like we talk about in class, any dips, any warp, it's going to ride across the top of those a little bit better than a shorter plane which can go down in uh, any, uneven, any unevenness on the surface. There is a five and a quarter which kind of breaks with the trend of getting slightly bigger as we go and it is actually narrower than these number fives. I don't have one of those and I actually the only five and a half I have is in pieces over to the right of my bench. I actually don't have a couple parts for it so it's actually in pieces right now. Which takes us up to the number six. Okay. And actually I misspoke. The number five is what we'd call a jack plane. I'm sorry. And it is for the stock removal. Number six is the four plane. Sometimes referred to as a short joiner. Okay. Um, you can kind of do just a little bit of everything with this. You could set it up to be a smoothing plane. It is a bit heavier though. Uh, another thing you could use it for is you could use it for the job of a jack plane. You could use it to remove stock. Uh, Another thing that it, you know, it is useful for, we talk in shop, you know, the joiner, we do face joint boards before we put them into the planer, but after we're done planing, a lot of times we stand them up and run that edge through, so edge joining. That's a place where that number six, it's kind of a short joiner. Longer sole is going to allow you to go across any unevenness a lot better. And again, I also have an Ohio here. Really nice plane, really nice to use. It also, like the other two, it's an 06. Now, moving up, we have a number 7 here. So, we just had a 6. 7 is obviously quite a bit larger. And this would be the first of what they, we call the joiner planes. The usual use for these, again, is edge joining. Uh, I've seen craftsmen use these as smoothing planes before. They are fairly heavy. This is probably about, I don't know, probably close to 8 pounds, maybe more. Um, this one's very sharp, works very well, but it is kind of heavy. It wears you out if you use this for long periods of time. So, for that reason, you know, a lot of people just use this for edge joining. And last but not least, the largest of the normal bench planes that Stanley or a lot of these companies makes, uh, it was the number eight. Now this one's made by a company called Union, which I believe Stanley owned them. And it's a little bit different. It's called an X8, and that just refers to how we adjust the blade back here in front of that handle. But it works the same way. You know, it's obviously a lot wider than the 7 here, and it is also quite a bit longer, okay? Uh, again, super heavy, it's, it's 10 pounds or better, and like I said with the last pretty much three planes, usually edge joining. I really have not seen a ton of people use this for anything but going across the edge of a board. 
And one thing about these, a lot of times they're priced so a little bit higher. A lot of people don't really try to pick one of those up unless they find a deal. Um, the number seven works just as well. Of the planes here, you know, the most common you're going to see is these number fours. Number five is fairly common as well. That's not to say that the rest of them aren't common planes, but what you're going to see a lot of are these fours and fives. And to be honest with you, I would say for most of you know the bench work, you can compare it to the work if you've had me for class that you've done in there. A good bit of what we do, we do use a combination of power and hand tools. These number fours and number fives are going to do probably most of what you want to do in the shop as far as what I've gone over in class. And what's nice about these is these are the relatively cheaper hand planes to pick up. Um, I, if it were me, I would kind of keep an eye out for like Stanley, Sargent, Miller's Falls makes some really nice planes. And as crazy as it sounds, you know if you've had me, I usually don't recommend you buy you know, the brand new Stanleys. You can look around and find these um, fairly inexpensively. Uh, I think this old, I think I found out this is from around 1900 uh, Ohio. I think I paid like $10 for it. And the blade's super sharp. It works really well. Uh, that little Fulton number two, I think another $10, $12. So they work really well. And you, if you wait, if you look around, you can find them fairly inexpensively. We've tuned a bunch of these in class. I know we've had students bring these in before, and we've kind of refurbished them, got them cleaned up, and actually turned them into users. So kind of moving on, the last thing people at school ask me a lot, you know, we have another one up here, has a handle or a tote, has a knob. Super narrow though, it looks a lot different than these other hand planes because, you know, it does have this beech wood on it. The rest of these have a lot of uh, rosewood, sometimes mahogany knobs and totes, especially the older ones. This is called a Stanley number 40, and it is kind of a bench plane, but its main purpose is it's called a scrub plane. And the purpose, it's like a more aggressive jack plane. This is super aggressive as far as removing stock. You can even see, I'll try to move forward so you can see it, the blade is actually curved, super, it's a really super curved edge in that blade. And what that does, when it goes into the piece of wood, it actually takes kind of a large scallop out of the wood and it allows you to remove stock very quickly. But you have to watch. It's easy to take off too much in one spot if you're not careful. And uh, that was one plane that I actually got in payment for doing a job from somebody. I, I didn't actually have to buy that one, but I'd kind of been looking for one for a while, so that worked out for me. Now, other ones, block planes. You know, we have our high angle block planes. And then I have a, a low angle block plane kind of in pieces right here. This is another one that was my grandfather, so it's kind of beat up, it's cracked. But the blade sits at a lower angle. But basically, you know, we've used these on shorter boards at school, I know, to like, you know, trim up a burn mark from the table saw, something like that. One of the big uses with these has always traditionally been trimming end grain. And, you know, a lot of times we don't do that in the shop if we don't have to. That's one area that I always tell you, you know, if we can get away with doing a bit of sanding with maybe a DA sander or even using the disc sander, we try to do because a lot of times people try to rush it too much in the shop. You can't take a real, real heavy bite on end grain with a hand plane. Otherwise, you are going to really chip stuff out. Uh, another thing it helps do is to have a backing board clamp to it. We've talked about that in class. Now, another block plane, this is my, actually my daughter's. I made it with the uh, advanced wood kids the other year. You know, this has an old, uh, I think it's an old Stanley block plane blade that I actually took on a milling machine and milled it down so it would fit in here. And uh, it actually works really well. She She's only six, but I... She's actually had that for a couple of years, and she can actually use that. It works really well for someone with smaller hands. Another block plane I told you, that's just that little copper and hickory wood 
plane. That was more, it does work well, but it's, it was more of an example to show people, you know, exactly what we could do. You know, we, we're pretty blessed with our school having access. We have a wood shop and a metal shop side by side, so there's not too many projects that we can't accomplish, you know, given the time frame we have at school. Now, some of the more specialty planes we have. Now, this would be a rabbiting plane. It's a, what is that? It's a Stanley number 181. Again, the numbers aren't really, they don't mean anything other than to sig signify what, you know, what model you have. So, we know a rabbit's basically just a step in the edge of a piece of wood. Uh, and what that does is, that's going to allow us to clean that blade up. I'll bring it up to the camera because this is a little bit different than what we've usually used in most of my classes. You can see how that is set up right there. And basically that blade goes the whole way through from side to side. The other ones, those bench planes, there's a wall on either side. So you can't actually plane straight to the edge of that plane. This one you can. Uh, and what that does is that allows you to clean up the bottom of a rabbit on the edge of a board, something like that. Now another one, this is a small one, this is called a plow plane. That's made by a company over in England called Record. It's called a Record number uh, 043. You can see that it's, you know, fits in the palm of my hand. It's about the size of a block plane. This is super nice. The blade is very small. It's only about a little bit over a quarter inch wide, the one I have in there right now. It, it's great for plowing grooves. Like if you're going to put a bottom in a drawer, uh, I think last year we actually had someone use it in one of my classes to uh, put a panel on a door. It was just kind of hard to get into a spot, so he used that to actually plow grooves to put the panel on a door. On the same kind of token as a plow plane, here's one Stanley called a universal plane, a number 45, or I guess a combination plane more. Um, now, I only have a couple of the cutters for this. But originally, this would have come with, I think it's 16, 18 cutters that were supposed to be able to do just about any job you can think of. Up until then, you know, they've used a lot of uh, wooden molding planes to get, you know, a decorative edge on something. So you would have gotten some blades to accomplish that with this plane. You'd have gotten some plow plane blades. Uh, you could have cut tongue and groove with that. So it was supposed to replace all these wooden planes that carpenters were using up until then. Um, and it doesn't do a bad job, but for certain, for certain things, you know, the wooden planes I feel actually do work better. Now, one that I know we've used, if you've had me for wood one, it's kind of a plane, it's called a spoke shave. You know what I, I always tell you, basically, you know, we know a draw knife, that two-handled knife that we have in the shop, you know, a lot of times we use it to peel bark off of stuff we're about to turn. You know, I've always said that that spoke shave is kind of like, for me, a uh, draw knife for dummies. Uh, I use the spoke shave a lot, though, because, like we talk about in class, it's always going to hold that blade at a dedicated angle. It's not going to allow any more out, whereas with that draw knife, if we adjust where we, the angle that we attack the wood at, it's quite easy to make a mistake. Now, another one that a lot of people always say is a spoke shave, and I'll bring both of these over. You know, that's my spoke shave. Kind of small, fits in the palm of my hand. One that a lot of people say is a spoke shave, and it looks a little like it, maybe like a large one, except for the sole. What this is, this is a panel scraper. And basically, the blade goes at the, the opposite angle that most of these planes go at because you're actually pushing this across the wood to scrape just a super small amount of wood off at a time. And where that's nice for is, you know, large panels. We've used it for when we glue up uh, tables that have maybe a chess or checkerboard in it in the shop. Smoothing that down without having to actually use the... Uh, 
power sander. Another place that's really useful is figured wood. Like we, sometimes we have that curly maple in the shop or some cherry that has a lot of reverse grain. Those cabinet scrapers make it really nice to kind of clean those up without having any tear out from that piece of wood. Now, the one thing I always usually like to talk about, and we talked a little bit about it already, uh, putting together kind of like a little kit, because obviously we haven't been able to work together for, oh my goodness, probably over, over a month at this point, and you know, it was just announced this past week that school was not in session for the rest of the year. You know, I've had a few people ask me before, they did want to set up maybe even just a small shop at their house, do some hand, hand woodworking. That's awesome. A couple things, you know, just a small kit to kind of put together. Obviously, you know, a Stanley number four is super easy to find. Okay? I'll bring it up closer to the camera so we can see. It's kind of hard to do by myself here. So, you know, only about nine inches long. They're fairly easy to come by. Uh, you know, I I think most of mine have cost between fifteen and thirty dollars, so it's not a super large investment. Um, and definitely for this, you don't have to have something that uh, would be considered collector grade. You know, there's there's people that collect tools a lot. I, I have a small a small collection of tools I really don't use a lot because they're they are in such really nice shape um, and things like that you know you don't have to go out and look for something that's in super great condition if there's a little bit of surface rust I think I have one here that hasn't really been cleaned up um, yeah you can see there's some rust all over the sides I got this one not too long ago just kind of in rusty shape However, the other night, you know, I took the blade just on a piece of sandpaper just to kind of flatten it a little bit and to sharpen, and it sharpened right up. It actually works really well. So it didn't take a ton of work to get it to where it could cut. Um, you know, if you want a couple planes, you know, a block plane, I don't use them a ton, but you can usually find a block plane fairly inexpensively. You can see this one, wherever someone had it, got some water spots on it. I think I paid like five dollars for that. So, in all honesty, it, you can find some of these if you if you kind of look around fairly inexpensively. Uh, the same with the number fives. I, I really don't think I have a, spent a ton of money for these. I lucked into the the bedrock, which is a little different from the other ones. You can see the sides different. I think I paid like ten dollars for this, and when I got it home, I cleaned it up and realized it was in. Uh, excellent condition but it works really really well you know some other things that have been made we made in shop I talked a little bit about this with the uh, when we talked about the spring pole lathe the past couple weeks a carving mallet you know that I made that on a powered lathe but you know that would be a fine project. That would be a very easy project to do on the spring pole lathe. So that's an example of a homemade tool. You know, a couple other ones, like I said, we made this, I made that in the shop at school, plus the little brass mallet to adjust it with. Both work really well. They're both really nice tools to use. Other tools, you know, there's chisels, um, hand saws, there, there's, there's any number of hand tools and what my goal kind of is, this week was just to kind of talk to you about the uh, hand planes for hand plane appreciation day. Next week what my goal is, I have some chisels around here, I'm going to get out some different tools, kind of like a little kit that I would say are some really useful items to have in your shop, whether it's marking tools, measurement tools, um, things like that, that way you might be able to set up a small uh, work area for yourself at your house uh, if you're interested in doing that since it's going to be a while till we can actually have class together again. So, gave you a little taste. Hopefully it's not as long as uh, normally Mr. Bressler my talk is for Hand Plane Appreciation Day, but we did manage to have it this year even though we aren't in class together. So, until next time, 
We'll see you then.